This video is all about the small angle approximations. In the description to this video, I'll post a link to a video that I have done where I prove where these things come from. But this video is just about using them. So this is what they look like when you, uh, they are given to you on your formula sheet. And what it is saying is that when the angle is small, and by small, I mean when theta is roughly less than pi over 6 or less than basically 0 0.5 radians roughly we can approximate sine of the angle to be roughly the same as the angle so what that means is if the angle let's say if theta was uh, 0 0.3 i would consider that to be a small angle because it's less than pi over 6. So because that's considered a small angle, instead of me having to type into my calculator sine 0.3, I could just approximate that to be 0.3. I don't have to type it into a calculator. I know it's going to be roughly 0.3. That's the idea of small angle approximations. It means that we can just very quickly do calculations with trigonometric functions without having to worry too much about um, actually typing it into our calculator. The smaller the angle is, the more accurate these answers are. So the closer I am to zero, the more accurate these expressions are. So let's have a look at a specific example. So. Uh, here I have an angle, uh, an angle theta, which is pi over 12. Pi over 12, if you type that into your calculator, is roughly about 0 0.262. Now, if I were to type into my calculator, sine pi over 12, you would get roughly to, to three decimal places, 0 0.259. As you can see, pretty close to 0.262. If I was to type tan uh, pi over 12 into my calculator to three decimal places, I'd get, I'd get 0.268, which again, pretty close to my uh, 0.262. Cos, if I type cos pi over 12 in, that is equal to three decimal places to 0 0.966 with the small angle approximation the small angle approximation for cos is like this 1 minus theta over 2 all squared so if I typed into my calculator 1 minus pi over 12 all squared divide by 2 you would get roughly 0.966, which as you can see, is a very good approximation for cos pi over 12. So, like I say, these small angle approximations allow us to do very quick calculations with the trigonometric functions without having to use a calculator. Let's have a look at a typical exam question. So here I'm told that x is measured in radians, which is required for the small angle approximations to work. Use the small angle approximations to simplify this expression. So cos 7x minus 1. Now I know from the formula that cos theta can be approximated to be 1 minus theta squared over 2. So if it's cos 7x, I could approximate that to be 1 minus 7 theta over uh, 7 theta squared all over 2. Really important here that you're squaring the 7, oh, let's just say 7x rather not 7 theta. Really important here that you're squaring the 7x, you're squaring the whole thing, the 7 and the x. So that's my cos 7x. I've then got the minus 1 from here. 
Then on the denominator here, I've got an x. Well, there's no trigonometric function there, so that can just stay as an x. And then I've got the sine x, which I know can be approximated just to be x. So let's simplify this then. So on the numerator, I've got the 1 minus the 1. So that cancels out. And then I'm just left with the minus uh, 7x all squared. So 7x times 7x is 49x squared over the 2. On the denominator, I've got the x times x is x squared. And now we can see that the x squareds here and here will cancel out. And I'll just get left with minus 49 over 2. And there we go. That is the simplified expression of all of this. Which is useful because it means that instead of if the angle is small, so if x in this case, if that is less than pi over 6, then I don't need to worry about all this awkward expression. I know what it is. I know it's going to be roughly equal to minus 49 over 2. So that's the idea of the small angle approximations.